Sure hope I don't have lipstick in my teeth. Do I? <laughs> Not like you guys can interact and tell me, unfortunately. And I guess I could do YouTube Live. I haven't done that before. Anyways, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Renee. Why did I just do that? I have no idea. Um, so yes. Let's let's address some things. I made all these promises and I was doing really good about being consistent on YouTube and then I kind of fell off the face of the earth, so to speak, social media wise. In fact, I think that it was my longest period without posting to Instagram since I started Instagram. And for me, that is like, so, uh, yeah, welcome for those of you who don't know, blah, 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 don't know me. I am Renee Carlson. I do makeup. Now I'm on YouTube. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on Twitter. I'm on, you know, all over the place. And uh, I actually am sort of prepared tonight. It gets hot. Excuse me. I saw in here. And these, um... Uh, fake leather leggings are lined, fleece lined. So if you see me sweating during this video, blame the leggings. Everything's from Express, by the way. I do have um, it shown in my story currently on Instagram. By the time this is up, the story might be gone, but you should follow me on Instagram anyways. Seattle MUA Renee, I'll leave the link below. Um, before we start on today's video, which, by the way, um, you know, I think I should, I think I'm supposed to have, like, one of those disclaimers where, um, basically, in a nutshell, we're going to be talking and discussing about my own personal struggles and history with, a uh, diagnosed severe depression and anxiety. So I just wanted to, you know, cut to the chase right away, let you guys know what this video is going to be about. Of course, I'm not going to go into huge details, but you know, I mean, I've, I feel like I should let you guys know. So, you know, for younger people watching or parents, just, just FYI, just throwing it out there. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to hear part of my story, then just keep watching and listening to me ramble. So let's get into depression. Um, you know, it's like, where do you start? So let's start with a little bit of background about my childhood. Of course, I want to also say not just for YouTube, but for Instagram, you know, I was gone for about a week off of Instagram and, you know, everyone that has been supporting me for any length of time, you know, that's kind of like very strange and abnormal for me. And, um, you know, when I came back, I'm sure that a lot of people, you know, had good intentions and for the most part were very wanting to be supportive and, you know, were caring about what could possibly be going on in my life that caused me to fall off the face of the earth. But, you know, then I also realize that, you know, when you start to gain some followers, supporters, I hate the word follower. I don't also like the word influencer. They just seem so, I don't know, like, I feel like everyone should be able to make their own mind up. Like, we shouldn't actually influence you 
to do or buy anything. It's just, you know, it's just one person's opinion. So that's just my opinion on it. Um, so I, oh, and by the way, I'm usually one of those people that talks all over the place, and I can already tell that this video is definitely going to be all over the place. I will try my best to, you know, stay on track, but just warning you, the train might, you know, stop along the way. We might run into a bus. You just never know. As long as Sandra Bullock is, is driving, we'll be okay. If you didn't get that, I don't know what to tell you. So, for me, personally, um, I'm, I'm, I'm real in the sense of when I started YouTube consistently this year, I made a promise to myself and to you guys, although mainly to me, that I am just going to be on here. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to talk about things that I want to talk about. And of course, you know, also get recommendations from you guys because, I mean, this is a makeup and beauty channel and I'm going to be primarily talking about beauty and makeup. If I was talking about, you know, sports cars and baseball, you would probably be confused and wonder, you know, who you're really watching or supporting and wonder what the hell could be going on in my brain. <laughs> so, with all that being said, so I, I struggle in not only just society, but I find myself also struggling online a lot because, um, you know, you guys that follow me on Instagram, you know my captions, I, I literally, I don't think about what I'm going to write in a caption before. Sometimes something will come to me and I'll take a picture knowing what I want to say. Most of the time it's either sarcastic or funny just because that's me. But for the most part, I just look at a picture and my fingers start going and I start typing and, you know, usually it's somewhat entertaining. So um, that's just kind of me and how I work. I don't necessarily post just a product shot and say, you know, hope everyone has a blessed Friday. No, I'm not saying at any, at all, that there's anything wrong with that. I just, I decided, I think in the last year, really, like truly, that I'm just going to be me. And of course, you know, I don't like everyone that I meet and everyone that I see on the street. And, you know, I don't like all the cars. I, I have, everybody has their own personal preferences. You're not going to like everything. And so, you know, and that's fine. If you don't like me, don't watch. If you don't, you know, like makeup, maybe don't follow makeup pages. It just seems pretty common knowledge to me. But, you know, I just, I struggle because I... People say, and I'm going <laughs> to try my best not to quote Tupac a lot, but, you know, he's my favorite, and not, not just for his music, although I love that, but for who he was, he always kept it real. Whether you appreciated it or asked for it, you got it, and in a sense, I... My brain works in kind of the same way. I, you know, I, I had a lot of the same friends since like middle school, high school, and from, you know, up until ab like the last few years, I feel like we always discussed when there was like an issue or someone's feelings got hurt because in 20 years, that's probably going to happen. 
But I've just noticed in the last few years, me talking about, you know, my own feelings, not what I think someone else feels or what someone else did, but my personal feelings about something that happened. And for the most part, it seems like people just don't really appreciate that. And, you know, I struggle because people say they like real people and they want to be authentic and they want these friends that can be real with them and tell them when there's an issue and they want to communicate and talk about it. But when it actually comes down to it, they don't really actually want that. So where I was going with that is I have either successfully pushed a lot of people away or lost friends or, you know, um, exes, whatever, some family members even for that exact reason. Um, you know, I'm a good actress. I'm not going to lie. I, I can put on a front and act like I'm okay for a little bit. But inside, it's always a struggle. And that's, that's just what kind of depression and anxiety is. There, there is no stereotype, although I feel like a lot of people, like outsiders looking in on someone's life, you think, gosh, she's pretty. She has all this makeup. She has, you know, long hair, even though it's up in some weird space buns. Um, you know, she's got a nice car. She's got all this stuff, and she's depressed. Well, she just needs to do this. She needs to get out of the house more. She needs to get out and be social and go to clubs. And it's not that easy. If it was that easy and people could just make their minds up, and say, you know, hey, look, I'm depressed, but I don't want to be, so I'm going to change that, then I don't think there would be such a thing as depression. Because if you think about it, who actually really wants to wake up and say, you know, gosh, today I'm going to choose depression. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to ask my doctor just to put me on Zoloft for, for fun, just because I'm bored. No. It, it comes and it goes. You learn coping mechanisms and, you know, that's just that. So, a little tiny bit of history. Um, my dad, who passed in 2012, was a very high-functioning alcoholic, narcissistic personality and um you know I don't want to get into too much of my family history a out of respect for my mom because she is still here even though my dad isn't so I don't want to you know I just gotta keep that boundary respectful so I'm not gonna you know talk about them except for the one fact of they got divorced when I was five because my mom wanted a better life for me and so you know round of applause for mom and um you know and then I had my stepdad around until I was 13 and then it was just my mom and I so I didn't necessarily have the best role models as far as men go, and I came to the realization when I was about 25 that I definitely was picking men that were either like my dad or my stepdad. I don't know how I do it, but I am a pro at finding these dudes, <laughs> like, I'm like a like mosquito trap where they just come and just 
I find that and they just stick on me. So anyways, um, that's just a little bit of background about my childhood. I have been on antidepressants for over 10 years and I think it's important for me to discuss um, at least the medication I was put on and then I'm on Zoloft now and you know I think that and I believe that those who know me really well like my mom I guess would be the one that would say because she has that I'm I have and I do seem better in the sense of not like I was so bad but just I'm able to kind of live a little bit more of a normal life and you know I, I leave my house a little more so that's good um you know laughing for me I'm sometimes I make jokes and I'm sarcastic and I am funny when inside I'm not it's just my way of like expressing that I guess so there's another new thing you get to learn about me um this video is really hard to film by the way if I seem awkward it's because this is this is new for me but it's important and I've always wanted to do this video so we're here and we're doing it and I'm not stopping unless my camera turns off so um Initially, I I went to therapy. I I started having panic attacks, and those came on just kind of out of nowhere. And you know, there were some stressful situations. I was with a guy. Um, my ex fiance was a very a bad um, addict, a drug addict. So, you know, there was that going on, but I just, I just couldn't handle it. I just, I would have these panic attacks. I remember one time I was driving and I lost feeling of my arms while I was driving, which, you know, isn't that good because you kind of are supposed to have your hands on the steering wheel and be driving the car. So I luckily it was right by the hospital and so I just took myself there and they told me it was a panic attack and uh, I went to therapy for a while to try to you know do it the natural way without taking any medication. Didn't work and so I went to a psychologist and um, long story short, I was put on a Fexer, which at that time was really, the FDA was really, really pushing for doctors to write scripts for. I found this out when um, about two years ago, I looked into it more and, you know, I started to realize that I'm not the only one out there that has had this issue with this medication and that is also the reason why I wanted to make this video is because Effexor, um, Venlafaxin is the generic brand name of it. So at first I was doing really well on that. I was able to get back to my normal life. And it was like I it was like I was the same person I was before I had the panic attacks. So that was great. Um I worked at Boeing. I worked there for six years. So I had a very, you know, normal job where I worked eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, and I, I made it work. Um, then there were, you know, some other things that happened and, you know, I've had some, some traumatic events 
that, you know, I'm not going to get into detail about because I want this to be just about depression and anxiety. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's always, everybody has problems. And it's just a matter of how your brain processes the chemicals and how you react to those problems that can make or break it. So for me, I was doing great for a while. And then I noticed that I was actually going backwards and it was actually transforming to be worse than it was before I was even on the Effexor. So um, very actually scary to research and you know I mean you don't necessarily want to use Google to research anything medically because you know you'll type in you have a sore throat and you know you you have bad sinuses and that it'll say that you have like stage five cancer and you're dying so <laughs> I am not <coughs> excuse me <coughs> one moment I definitely do not recommend, you know, Googling symptoms or going on the internet to find a cure for anything. But I was mainly wanting to know information and kind of see if there was anybody else out there on the same medication that was going through the same type of thing that I was. Turns out there was. And it's actually very alarming and I read a lot of articles a lot of forums and about a lot of people that have had really bad um, reactions and experiences it was hell to transition off of it but I knew I had to do it um I it, it was, it was crazy. It was a really, really, really bad and scary time in my life. Um, you know, I put that disclaimer in the front, but I'm just going to say, like, I never have been suicidal. I just, I actually, you know, I'm not going to get into my opinion about that because I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but I'm just going to say that I haven't ever thought about harming myself because I just, I think that that's, it's not, you know, that's not a means to an end. I mean, it is, but it's not, you know, I, I think it's borderline kind of selfish because it ends up hurting the people that love you so much and you know but that's just my opinion and I'm gonna leave it at that and say you know that I don't I don't have that type of depression which 